Hello, hello, hello. It is me, it is me, your true heel phenom, SP3. We are back in our DeLorean Pump Up the Flux Capacitor 4. What episode is it? <laughs> episode 22 of True Rewind. I am back once again with the condescender of all reporting, Mr. Romeo Anthony Cologne. What's up, SP3? Another pay-per-view, baby. Let's do this. Yes, another another pay-per-view and another episode where it, it is just us two. We don't have our backseat driver, our supreme Ivan Ooze, uh, drunk guy JJ. Apparently, he he fought over the the last bit of cocaine in 1995 at a gas station and got into a fight with Fake Santa. He wasn't the only one who get beat up by fake Santa on this on this episode of True Rewind, but he is the first. Gang bang. <laughs> so if you are if this is your first time watching True Rewind, this is where me and my good brothers we go back in time to the Monday Night War. We talk about WCW Nitro and WWF uh, Raw. Uh, and we review the shows and let you know what was the better show for the week. But we also review the pay-per-views in between. And on this episode, episode 22 of True Rewind, we will be reviewing In Your House Seasons Beatings from December 1995. Before we get into anything, this is a quick reminder to you, push the like button, give us a thumbs up. Our pay-per-view reviews for True Rewind are usually one of our most liked videos on this series, so we want to keep up that consistency, so give us a thumbs up for this one. The i-card down at the bottom, you can push that to subscribe, and the bell below that to stay notified for all the great content right here on True Hill Heat. If you want to personalize it, you can personalize it to just remind you when and true rewind drop so keep it up keep it consistent and romeo you are our, our quarterback our driver of the delorean take it away december 17th 1995 hershey pennsylvania never been there have you been there sp3 no i can't maybe well, apparently it's the sweetest place on earth yeah, I think that's where the Hershey Chocolate Place factory is at. Yeah, maybe I have. I don't know. Maybe when I was a kid. I don't remember. We're starting the show with tag team action. Razor Ramon and Marty Jannetty versus the one, two, three kid and Psycho Sid with Ted DiBiase. Gold Dust is in the crowd. He's watching from his golden couch. He's got an usher with him. Uh, Razor and Marty are wearing matching jackets. Very cute. When do we pay for them? Goldust is absolutely enamored by Razor. Uh, they interview him. He, he loves all his physical qualities and attributes. Oh my God, I I felt I felt somewhat uncomfortable watching this Goldust interview with Todd Pettingill because Goldie literally is almost having an orgasm watching uh, Razor Ramon. One line that I did write is before I drown in a homo a homo hormonal. Oh. Sea of life. <laughs> I have to ask if you can give him this. And he hands uh, Todd Pettengill a gold envelope. Yes. Uh, we will learn about that golden envelope a little later. But Razor and Marty, they win this with ease. Uh, Razor with a middle rope bulldog on Sid in 12-22. Sid and Kid, they talked a big game with Ted. Uh, you know, the Fresh Prince. Uh, it, they did not back it up. Uh, Razor doesn't get his revenge on Kid, though, because he, he tries to raise his edge after, but Sid saves him. I gave this one star. I gave this uh, t I gave this two and a half stars. I, I like this match. The crowd was very much into this. Uh, we we were probably we were probably a little bit distracted by the the Goldust interview, but for uh, 1995, <laughs> that Goldust interview is heavy. <laughs> <laughs> it was very very heavy but this was one of the more entertaining matches of the night and no i'm not saying very much here <laughs> the Meltzer, uncle dave gave us one and a quarter stars he was a little bit more generous than you just slightly <laughs> all right the ring announcer has no clue what segment is next uh, he announces buddy landell is about to wrestle jerry lawler thankfully the king takes control 
And he starts the next segment. He announces the return of Jeff Jarrett. Yeah, that's right. J E double F. J A double R E double T. As Jeff will say about five times in this segment, it feels like. Lawler presents Jeff with a gold CD for selling more than 500,000 copies of Win My Baby Tonight. And then Jarrett just blabs on about his new tour to promote his album, Greater Than Great. And he tosses his name into the Royal Rumble. I think he announced he's going to be first, which is stupid. (laughs) Then he goes on guest commentary for the next match with Lawler. And this segment would not end. I fell asleep (laughs) watching the first part. You wouldn't have fell asleep if you would just would have sang with my baby tonight. Burn my things, drinking hard on the go, with the hands on the clock, be ticking too slow. I can't wait to be alone with my baby tonight. Thank you, thank you, Road Dog uh, Jesse Jones for that. Uh, Jesse James, <laughs> appreciate that. Uh... No, I'm Jesse Jones. <laughs> 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 Dean Douglas claims he's not fit to compete against Ahmed Johnson. Bait and switch. Douglas introduces a new graduate student of his. It's former Smoky Mountain heavyweight champion, Buddy Landau, who comes out to Ric Flair's old WWF theme. This yes. was a rib on Douglas because Douglas hates Ric Flair. <laughs> and, and his pupil is a Ric Flair clone. I didn't know that. That's hilarious. <laughs> Oh man, wait, there's more. No, I knew I knew Dean hated Rick, but I didn't know they did it as a rib. That's hilarious. <laughs> there's more ribbing to come. Ahmed destroys Buddy with the Pearl River plunge in 42 seconds. Then he takes Douglas's paddle and smacks him in the ass with it. Another rib. And fun fact, the funniest rib of all. Dean Douglas was never seen on WWF programming again. So his final appearance, he didn't even get to wrestle? Wow. Um, I gave this a dud. It's only 42 seconds. Squash. Yeah, I gave this zero stars. Yeah, this this is... I, I would have put NR not rated, but yeah, zero stars. Wow. I'm not in the mood. We're rating everything. <laughs> Meltz gave us a dud. After the match, Jerry Lawler along with Jarrett have a Memphis-style reunion and making fun of Ahmed. Before Ahmed tells Jarrett, uh, do, do you have the line? Yes, I do. Okay, say it. That's enough of that. Let me let me tell you something. You achy breaky wannabe. You fake. You fake. You a fake cowboy. You a urban cowboy. You know that. You an achy breaky wannabe fake punk. And, and then he talks to Jerry. Let me tell you something. You got one more time to ever get in my face talking about you understand that do you understand probably not i'm gonna make you something i yeah i, I put i'm gonna make you something because i had no idea what he was saying and you know i take my time to get each of these I'll lines make you right. something proper. that's usually his go-to lines i'm like that and at that point that's when he gets cracked over the head with the golden cd case very nicely very nicely um and then he's hit several times with a chair i'm at sells it for maybe five seconds and he's hulked up he's Ahmed up and he chases off Jarrett to the back but but once they get to the back they just walk very smoothly and call me into the gorilla oh my god <laughs> it, it was just a clusterfuck on the entrance way it was like he wasn't supposed to catch up to Jared and like Jared's like trying to hit him with the chair while Ahmed's trying to grab the chair and they're like on each other's backs it's just a total slot fest Pun intended. Oh. Segway. I see what you did there. <laughs> but before we get into that, Todd, Be- Todd Pattengill interviews Razor Ramon by the phones. He's got an IC title match tomorrow on Raw against Yokozuna. Todd gives him the golden envelope. Razor opens it uh, to letter or a poem or something. He reads maybe a few lines. The, the letter reads, roses are red, violets are blue, bend over, let me tickle you. No, just kidding. Just kidding. That's not what it says. <laughs> I was about to oh, say, how did that, <laughs> the context. <laughs> I dropped my mic. Oh my it god. It looks like it looks like maybe you could read what's on there from the back, but that would take some very uh, investigative reporting that I'm not doing. I Razor think th- I think Goldust also wants to wants to um, know something from the back. Oh, 
<laughs> Razor throws a tantrum. Uh, he's just disgusted and pissed off. Razor not happy with that letter. And then, hot pen match. Between Hunter S. Helmsley and Henry Godwin, Hillbilly Jim out of nowhere is a special guest referee. Poor okay. Tony Chimmel gets slopped at the beginning of this bout. Not the good slop, the bad slop. Uh, yeah. Godwin then slops Hunter S. Helmsley in the face <laughs> while he's tied up to the ropes. I thought this was a decent brawl, actually. I was way past my expectations. I thought Hunter looked good. Hunter gets thrown into the pen. On the outside of the pen, excuse me. And gets slop dropped next to the pen. He bleeds on his back. Blood and guts. And then Henry blindly charges into Hunter. Hunter back body drops him into the pin for the win in 9.03. Like I said, I, I thought this was okay. This is, I gave us two stars. I gave this... I didn't even give it zero stars. I didn't give it a dud. I just wrote shit. This oh, was shit. Wow. This was no, way... Wow, this was way too long to get to the destination that we all knew we were oh, going to get. Bits. This was way too long. This was about <laughs> this was about seven and a half minutes too long for me. This was shit. This was this was awful. And we usually have guests for our pay per views. I'm pretty sure no one answered the call to be a guest for this pay per view for wow. this match in particular. Probably one of the other matches on this card, which we'll get to as well. But this was probably the number one reason why no one wanted to. Bro, get started. I've seen worse matches on these senior houses. This was okay, especially a young Triple H. Uh, I think. Hey, if you if you're a 1995 judging this, you're saying, you know what, that kid looked good out there. He's, he might have something in him. Hey, I didn't rate it negative five stars like I did Yokozuna versus Mabel, but this was <laughs> shit. This Never was shit. Up. After the match, what did Uncle Dave give it? Oh, he was in between us, I guess. Well, that's what she said. One star. Uncle Dave, drunk Uncle Dave. That's why I call him <laughs> drunk Uncle Dave. <laughs> After the match, Helmsley gets body slammed into the pen by Godwin a couple of times. As if that's not enough. Some asshole throws a milkshake at Triple H's head. Did he really deserve that? After yes. what he just went through? Yes, absolutely, for that shit match. <laughs> and then Hunter does some bad, over-the-top banana peel slips in the pen. Shawn Michaels levels of overselling. Hey, learn from the best. That's who he's writing <laughs> at the time. Then it's time for Owen Hart versus Diesel. Owen Hart does some legwork on Diesel, but Diesel overpowers him with a jackknife. He goes to do it again, and this asshole ref, Tim White, stops him. Who the fuck are you, bro? Like, the ref DQs Diesel for defending himself from the ref putting his hands on him. Dirty finish in 435. The fans love this new Diesel. I like this new Diesel. The ref clearly did not. <laughs> the, how short it was, you know, I only gave this uh, 0. 0.75 stars. I gave this two stars. This was. Oh, this man. Yes, this was this was this was better than the slot the, the the Hogman match because it was four minutes. It got straight to the point. It got to the destination that we figured it would go to. Diesel had to show his new attitude. I love the yell out, "This is for you, Sean!" Before the first jackknife power bomb. I forgot um, about that. Yes, that was a nice little a nice little touch there, but I agree. The the referee was way out of hand. It's not up to you how many jackknives he gives him. He he's you didn't you didn't care about how many Insiguri Sean was getting after nope. he just came back from getting beat up by like ten thugs in Syracuse. So you shouldn't care about Owen Hart. But I, I'm glad Owen Owen got the win here. I like Diesel's new attitude. This was this was fun for, for about a four minute match. And I'm sure Owen is going to be a, a dick on the mic uh, talking about this win. Yes, he got a, he got another W. And and you we also uh, Jared King Lawler. I don't give him credit for many things because he doesn't deserve it usually on commentary. But he <laughs> did he did mention something that I didn't think of when uh, we first heard of this match. But Diesel has now versed all the members of the Hart family currently in the WWF in three consecutive pay per views. And beaten one of them? <laughs> <He's> <laughs> a, no, he lost to all of them. He lost to British oh, Bulldog. That's right. He, he, lost, he lost to Brett. 
and then he lost. You would think he'd be bulldog, but no, it's just like this. Oh man, that's rough. Meltz gave this 1.5 stars. Savio Vega, he comes out with Santa Claus. They're handing out free merch. Teddy Biasi comes out and talks trash to the fans for maxing out their Christmas their credit cards on this Christmas uh, holiday. <laughs> He says anybody can be bought, and he's going to prove it. He invites Savio Vega into the ring. Savio's just awful on the mic, talking Spanish and English. Santa turns on Savio, belting him with the gift bag. Ted DiBiase has bought Santa Claus. Vince McMahon on commentary says, say it ain't so. Christmas has been desecrated. <laughs> he Savio. called this the des- your desecration of Santa Claus. That's what he, he, yo, Vince, Vince was the MVP of this whole segment. Him just being utterly outraged by the actions of Million Dollar Man turning Santa Claus heel. And then and then we we I, I thought it was gonna be some magical reveal. I thought it was gonna be like Tatanka, uh, Kama, some member of the Million Dollar Corporation underneath the Santa Santa Claus uh, garage. But Santa Claus gets his uh, his his hat and beard removed, and it's some bum. It's a fucking bum. No, you know who it is. Oh, he will eventually go on to be an ECW legend. Balls Mahoney. Look at his face. <laughs> It's a bum. <laughs> it's a bum. It's a balls bum. Oh my god, are you serious? I yes. didn't even recognize him with the short hair. No, he looks way different. But it's it, Balls Mahoney. But they, but they never used him in WWF, did they? That's funny, but we are in uh, you know, ECW country, as we will find out later tonight. <laughs> I guess so. Pennsylvania. There you go. Dork Hendricks shills WrestleMania the video game. The Super Nintendo version is $15 more than the PlayStation version. How? And he's, and it comes with a strategy guide on, on VHS. Well, I just got to highlight. I know you're going to get into this match next. But I just got to highlight the hype package for May, King Mabel versus The Undertaker. WWE is known for their great hype packages and video packages. Um, you know, a lot of people will say WrestleMania 17 with uh, Rock and Austin, which we'll get to eventually, is one of the greatest of all time. I'm a big, I'm a big supporter of the Running Up That Hill uh, video package for Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker. Uh, Daniel Bryan versus Triple H. Oh yeah, one of my all-time favorites. Those are like the top three, and, and even the oh, early. Speaking er- recently, speaking recently, yeah. just uh, but Clash of Champions, I, I love, really like the the Uso and Reigns video package. U- Uso and Reigns was a great one. Even last year, your your you, I see her in the background. Your queen, your queen Charlotte Flair, our Becky, queen, our queen, your queen Charlotte Flair, uh, Becky Lynch, and our Lord and Savior, UFC Hall of Famer. Oh, she's ours. <laughs> Your Lord is safe. <laughs> the, baddest, the baddest bitch on the planet. Ronda Rousey, their three-way at WrestleMania 35. That was a great video package. Even earlier years, like Undertaker versus Kane, great video package right there. This might have been the worst hype package that I've ever seen produced by WWF. If there was ever a hype package that made me not want to watch a match, it would be King Mabel versus The Undertaker at In Your House Seasons Beatings. Because it had it had 50% of Mabel talking on the mic, and Mabel might be Mabel might be a Hall of Famer for one of the worst promos ever. Mm. Mabel, Mabel is is talented in his own way. Uh, I enjoyed him as uh, Big Daddy V, just for comedy's sake. Um, but, man, his King Mabel run had some of the worst promo work I've ever heard. Now, Psycho Sid's on the roster, too. Yes, and I know, <laughs> I know. That's why I'm, this is this is quite the accomplishment to be one of the worst promo guys. When Sid at this point is one of the worst as well, and one two three kid is right up there with them. But Paul Berra tried to save this promo package with his promo, which he cut. I, I wrote it. I wrote it right here. Oh, Mabel, it's time for you to pay the Grim Reaper for your mistake. You stole the remnants of the secret urn. 
You violated the casket. You will be buried. That's all I got. But <laughs> thank you, Paul. You you tried to save the day there. But but God, Mabel, you're awful. God bless your soul. King Mabel makes his entrance, and did you see Jeff Hardy dying as one of the jabronis carrying his fat ass? <laughs> did you see him? Did you see his face? He was like, oh. <laughs> young Jeff, young, young 15, Paying 16. his dues, paying his pain, dues. Paying his dues. This match, Mabel has Undertaker dead to rights in the casket, pun intended. He then inexplicably refuses to close the lead, lid walks to the other side of the ring to get his crown put on, then dances back to the casket <laughs> where Undertaker makes his comeback. Mabel then gets thrown in the casket after a pretty bad choke slam and a boot to the back of his head. Mo interferes. He's got the remnants of the urn around his snuck. Taker beats his ass too, throws him in the casket, takes back the remnants of the urn. Paul Bear screams, The urn! The urn! Mabel has been selling that kick to the back of the head for about two minutes. Could have easily come out of the casket. Really could have. He really could have. I've never <laughs> seen someone in a casket that long. He fell asleep. And like, he's not knocked out. He's rolling around like in pain. Like Taker wins, closing the lid in 6-11. Paul Bear gets back the remnants of the urn. He's so happy. Taker then puts his arms around his waist, signaling that he's coming for the belt next. I gave this one star. We were almost on the same track there. I gave this negative one star. <laughs> this was this was this was freaking bad. <laughs> this was slow. This was plotting. This felt a lot longer than it was. I just I never want to see Mabel versus The Undertaker ever again. <laughs> and this is probably the worst casket match I've ever Oof. seen. And I've seen some bad ones. I've seen Heider Reich versus The Undertaker. So oh my goodness. Yeah, this was bad. Meltz is in, in a good mood, maybe maybe drinking a little wine at his household. 1.5 stars. Oh, my God. Drunk Uncle Dave. D-U-D. <laughs> oh, Dud. shit. Dud. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. Oh, man. Don't, don't tweet that to him, though. He'll get, he'll get angry. <laughs> JR is backstage. He interviews Cornette with... British Bulldog and Diana Hart. Jim talks mad shit to Brett. Diana has complete faith in Davey. And Davey reminds us about Wembley Stadium three years ago. Also, Todd Pattengill interviews Bret Hart. Bret Hart is going to avenge 1992. Why does Diana Hart talk like she's a robot? Like, oh, they auto... An absolute like, charisma vacuum. <laughs> like, 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 they just auto... They wrote a script to her, and they just put it in the back of her, and it just came out like... I, I, I think my husband's going to win. <laughs> it's just really bad. Uh, the, the Tia Leone of WWF. Bless her Ugh. heart. Bless her. <laughs> then it's Bret Hart versus Bret Bulldog for the WWF Championship. Bulldog is wearing the same tights from 1992. I hope he washed, washed them at least. Well, he's going to have to after yeah. this match. <laughs> There's a sign by a fan that says hello to Extreme Championship Wrestling. It is confiscated by security. You cannot be holding that up. <laughs> and then the fans immediately start an ECW chant. <laughs> EC Duck! EC Duck! They, they felt like they were at an ECW event by oh. the end of this match. <laughs> Vince announces that Taker will face the winner of this match at the Royal Rumble. I do like that. That's one of the, the highlights of this whole show, is that they let you know who's the next contender before the show even ended. Cornette interferes with his special Santa racket. He says, get out of my face. I didn't do nothing. He yells at the cameraman. <laughs> Brett eventually is thrown into the stairs on the outside and does one hell of a blade job. Blood and guts all over the outside. The ring canvas, even Bulldog's tights. The ECW fans chant, he's hardcore. He's hardcore. This this was a mess. This looked like a murder scene oh. by the end of the, the the mat is is red. The bulldog's tights, the white parts are all red. It just blends in with the other red parts of it. Even even Diana. Diana showed the most emotion once her brother started bleeding <laughs> that she has in the last couple of weeks. 
Bulldog with a beautiful power slam on the outside, but when they get back in the ring, Brett executes La Magistral Cradle excellently for the win in 21 minutes, 10 seconds. I thought fantastic effort by Bret Hart here, doing what he could. Bulldog was meh, often blowing up. Uh, Brett did what he could to make this work. I give this four stars. Uncle Dave gave us four and a half. I I I would, yeah, I, I kind of am more leaning towards you. I gave this four stars. This one was a barn burner. This one, yeah, this was this one showed why Bret Hart was the top guy in 1995, even when he wasn't the WWF champion. When Diesel was holding the title, Bret Hart was the guy that was delivering some of the best matches of the year. He was the that's the reason why they put the title on him back at Survivor Series. And that's the reason why he's the guy that needed to pass the torch to the next guy who was going to be the top guy in WWF, which we'll we'll see upcoming. But this was a great effort by Bret Hart. British Bulldog actually wasn't as blown up as he was at SummerSlam 92. I'll which is that. hilarious when you think of that. <laughs> that, was, that was the better match. Yeah, that was the better match, but this was this was felt more like a main event match more than that one. That felt like a work weight, a work rate heavy match that they decided to put in the main event because of the location. While this match felt like those '80s type of world title matches, the matches that Ric Flair made famous, where he got bloody, he went to war with like the Ricky the Dragon Steamboat or the, the Dusty Roads, and then in the end he pulled out the victory and. Bret Hart is the consummate baby face. He's not the Ric Flair type. He's not the the heel that gets his comeuppance, but he did a great job of selling the blood, selling his exhaustion, and then pulling out the win with a great Mardi Gras cradle at the end. This was great wrestling. Todd Pettengill interviews Undertaker and Paul Bear, who are happy to be number one contender. Diesel barges in, not happy one bit. Diesel says he should be number one contender, even though he lost earlier. Technically, Paul Bear hilariously says, "Do you have the line?" I was just so like excited for them to to, to like hype a WrestleMania feud this early, but uh, Paul Bear says, <laughs> "That's not very cool." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how Undertaker and Diesel are gonna laugh right there. Uh, they stare down as a video package recaps tonight's events. To the very wonderful song, In Your House. In Your House is in the house tonight. In Your House. I thought you were still doing the Paul Bear's voice to that. <laughs> That's also my, my, my Southern black voice. <laughs> okay, let's wrap up this In Your House season's beatings. Mac oh my God, we're almost, we're, we're almost done with 1995. Thank God. Almost. Almost, <laughs> thankfully. Match of the night, no debate here. It's Bulldog and Bret Hart in your house. The the just one match uh, event that you pay what twenty thirty bucks for? Twenty twenty bucks. You you get one one really good match and a whole bunch of shit. Oh. MVP. I am gonna go Bret Hart. The excellence of execution. We're unanimous on that as well. Bret Hart deserves the MVP of this one. Bret Hart has a unique ability to turn turn chicken shit into chicken salad, even though there might be a little blood on it, you know? A lot of blood on this night. LVP, SP3, I don't know about you, but I am dishing out LVPs all over the place. <laughs> I got three of them. You get an LVP. You get an LVP. You get, you get an, an LVP. LVP. Uh, Savio Vega, you got beat up by fake Santa. Why, Dean? Yeah. Dean Douglas, you got uh, paddled, and this is your last appearance at WWF. <laughs> and Tim White for awful refereeing job. I'm, I'm going to go with the co-LVP. I only had one originally, but once you told me the backstory, definitely Dean Douglas is a co-LVP. And I, I I went on this for a while earlier in this episode. King Mabel, one of the worst, responsible for one of the worst hype packages in WWF history. 30 finish counter, we had one. Ref bump counter, we had one. Bait and switch counter, we had one. <laughs> 
And blood and guts. We had two. All right, we're going to put our thumbs out. And in three, two, one, it'll be thumbs up or thumbs down for In Your House Seasons Beatings. Three, two, one. Double <clears throat> thumbs down. Has I, any of these in your house gotten thumbs up yet? In your house number three, three thumbs down. In your house number four, three thumbs down. Yep, yep, all <laughs> thumbs down. <laughs> We're going to rate this pay-per-view on a scale of zero to ten. It's To me, it's one match show, but I, uh, I'll give it a... I, I was entertained by the Santa segment. It did, it did make me laugh. Uh, I thought Triple H looked okay. Um, was there anything else I liked? You heard the review. I'll give it a 2.9. I I I like the opener, and I like the main event. I like the main event enough to go 3 out of 10. Oh, wow, that's very close. Uh, we, we never do that. <laughs> <laughs> one, point off, one decimal point off. Uh, pay-per-view buys. Would you like to guess for reference Survivor Series? I, I shouldn't compare that, but it did 128K with the most recent... WWF pay-per-view, but In Your House number four, right? that's more comparable. That did 90K. What do you think In Your House number five did? Seasons beatings. I'm going to go 88K. 76K. Whew. Damn, that's down. So that is the lowest we have on the buy rates for any of the pay-per-views we've seen. Whew. So this would probably be maybe the third best pay-per-view we've seen. <laughs> That's amazing. One, two, three, four, five. So we've seen six pay-per-views. We just gave it a 2.9 in the three. And it's the third best. <laughs> right in the middle. Because that Brett and Bulldog match was that good. <laughs> that, <laughs> that is Brett amazing. Bull- that Brett Bulldog match was that good that it dragged it above so many trash-ass pay-per-views. I mean, to be fair, it was better than any match at uh, In Your House 3. It was better than any match at In Your House 4. Um, By yeah. the way, in, in Your House 3, you gave a 3 to. Yeah, I gave I gave a 3 to that, but I would say this this Brett and Bulldog match was better than um, Brett versus... So you want to bump it up a little bit? Maybe a 3.1? <laughs> in Your House number 5? <laughs> no, no. I, it, I, literally, literally the, those, those people you got 3s for Bret Hart. <laughs> it's literally the consistency on me giving three out of ten to in your house pay reviews and um, uh, no matter what this in your house was better than in your house number four which got a 0.4 a 0.5 and a one from the three of us so yeah no matter what so but i'm looking forward to starcade you know wcw versus uh new japan uh, maybe this could this be the best pay-per-view we've seen in 95 the last and- one and one of our great commenters, our king of the comments, we've been calling him on True Hill Heat, Kayfabe Tactics came up with a very a very cool idea. He commented on an episode, uh, a review. We only New- talk Japanese for that review. Is that the yeah. idea? No, no, oh. no. You know, oh. no, no. Yeah, I mean, he, he's fair. <laughs> he's at least fair. But he came up with a great cool idea. And we want to invite J News Japan, Mr. J News, to do the the review of Star K nineteen ninety five. Since he is our new Japan expert, we're we're gonna make all the sense in the world. Invite him on for Starcade. I'm excited. Hopefully hopefully uh drunk guy JJ will not be fighting with fake Santa anymore. And hopefully he had better luck than Savio Vega. I have no words. <laughs> <laughs> so, folks at home, our viewers, thank you so much for watching episode 22 of True Rewind. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Of course, down in the comments section below, let us know what you thought about In Your House Seasons Beatings from December 1995. What you thought about Bret Hart versus the British Bulldog, the hog pen match. Yes, give us your thoughts on that. We had differing views on that one. So let us know what you thought. And overall, what you gave the show, a thumbs up, a thumbs down, or a thumbs in the middle. Let us know in the comment section below. The i card down at the bottom to subscribe and the bell below that to stay notified for all the great content right here on True Hill Heat. 
episode 23 we will be back to reviewing wcw nitro and wwf raw from december 18th 1995 this is the final monday night raw of 1995 are you ready romeo i guess yeah end this year end (laughs) this year 96 here we come he wants to take it out back and pull the trigger <laughs> pretty much on 1995. So, for the Condesir of all reporting, Mr. Romeo Anthony Cologne. You can find me at the Pride of NY on Twitter and Instagram. And also right here on the True Hill Heat YouTube channel, Wednesday Night Warriors, where we go over the Wednesday Night War, NXT versus AEW. Me and my co-host Chris G with his co-host Mary Jane. Absolutely. You can find me on Instagram at TrueHeel underscore Epic SP3. You can also find me every Saturday or Friday sometimes on True Hill Heat, where we break down all your latest wrestling news and preview the latest shows coming up in the world of professional wrestling. It is me, it is me, your True Hill Phenom SP3. This has been True Rewind, episode 22, In Your House, Season Beatings. We are signing off until next time.